Hey there, I'm Kate from We Roll With It, and today you get to join me in dropping the fuel tank on a VS30 Sprinter. So, I know I started a lot of these videos with saying, oh, this is an easy install, this is an easy job, or whatever, but, um, this one, I'm going to do the same thing and say, this is easy. Uh, the hardest part about this was actually me procrastinating it because I thought that this was going to be a real punish of a job, but actually it's not that terrible. So once I did it, I was like, oh, that's not bad. So, um, we're going to do it again on this vehicle. This is my personal car and I'm going to show you what I do to do the fuel tank drop. Um, the reason that you'll be doing this is because you're probably like me installing a diesel heater, um, into your car, um, for your water and heat, which I am going to do. I'm going to install the diesel heat, which is a, a heater that's from Tasmania. It's a family owned company, really nice people, really good service. So I like them. So we'll do a follow up video after we get the fuel tank done and tapped to show you how to install the heater. Um, but basically if you have a sprinter that has the auxiliary fuel tap in it, then you're not going to have to do this step. But if you're like me and you've got a sprinter that doesn't have that fuel tap, then lucky you, you get to also drop your fuel tank and, and tap into it. So first thing we're going to do is drive the car around till it's on empty. Okay. So here's that. I've been driving around. Um, it will pop up the fuel like, Hey, I'm low sign at about two bars. It will get down to one bar and then it will get to this point where it's flashing. I think there is actually another point after this where it will beep, um, annoyingly at you. Uh, but this is low enough for me. At least that means it's not heavy and I'm not going to get myself covered in diesel when I'm dropping this tank out as little as possible is good. So you run around until you get to this point and then you're good to go. All right. Welcome to my office for the day. Uh, so I'm underneath the passenger side and I'm going to be dropping the van. Here's the fuel tank. This one's the, actually the extended one. So this is fun. Um, what holds this in is three of these, uh, metal, bars go under here and so we're going to take these off um this isn't imperative but what i like to do is they look they look somewhat similar when they're off um but they are ever so slightly different in size so i just put a little sticky on them one two three with an arrow facing forward that way when i'm struggling under here to lift this back up again and hold it i can put these on and know which one's which um you can undo the whole uh fuel cap assembly but i feel that's not necessary. I like to just undo it here. Um, so we're going to actually loosen both of these off, loosen this one a little bit, take this one super loose and then pull it separate here. Um, the reason I'm loosening both is so that when I take it down, I can tilt this upwards. So there is, even though we got the tank ram down to empty and flashing, it's still going to be a little bit of fuel in here enough to be annoying. Um, so take that off. And there's two other clips up here that we're going to undo. I'll just show you those. Here's the two clips that you're going to undo. Um, if you go sort of behind them and pinch, that little clippy is going to come down and out there, uh, which then unlocks it and you can just pull it off there. And a little bit of fuel is going to come out, but not too much. From the clips, then follow up. And there's going to be this electrical connection here. And then disconnect this, this as well. Just press the plug in there and then pull that back. All right, uh, holding the braces up are all uh, the 18 star torques. Um, maybe it's going to be tight, so just maybe crack them first and then uh, undo them with the easy method. Uh, milk crate is handy, it's kind of perfect height for this. Um, drop this down and then we'll do the, do the messy bit. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Alright, so here's our tank out of the car um, hopefully you've gotten to this point without covering yourself entirely in diesel, so that's good. Great job! Uh, this is a fuel line, um, pretty much whichever diesel heater you, you use is going to have this very similar fuel line. Um, this colour maybe will be yellow, but usually it's blue. Uh, okay, now here is where the newer sprinters get an easy pass and the older sprinters, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do a hard yard, but let me show you that. I'm going to turn you guys around so you can see close. Okay. Here is the top of the tank, right? This is what, what we need to get to. In 
the newer sprinters, this is what we're going to tap into, which is awesome because we can open this up and get our fuel line into there without having to take out this whole schmozzle. Unfortunately, if you have an older sprinter, what you're going to find is that there is going to be a third one of these friends here. And in which case you are going to have to undo this guy, lift it all out because you're going to need to get another one of these clippy, clippy oni friends, put them on the top and come from underneath and put um, a hose to dip into your tank underneath here. So unfortunately for you with the older sprinters, you've got a hard road ahead of you getting this guy off. There is a special tool that you can get from Mercedes or you can just, you know, tap, tap, hammer, hammer this guy out and do it like, you know, bush mechanic style up to you. Uh, so yay, if you're with me and you've got the new sprinter, cause we don't have to do that. So we're gonna go into this guy. What we're gonna do is snip off just the top of this. So here it is, you can see, we're going to just snip off just the very little tip of that. And what I've got here is a hose which is thick on this end, thin on this end, a couple of clampy friends. This guy's going to go on there. Uh, our blue hose is going to go into here. And essentially I'm going to drop it down in there, but I'm going to make sure to not drop this hose right to the bottom. I want to just drop it a little ways down so that I make sure that no matter what I'm running, if I'm running my, my heater, I'm not going to run my... Um, vehicles tank to empty so I always have enough to like get out of camp in case for whatever reason I've just been running low on fuel which is if I've got a massive tank here always got plenty of fuel so let's do that Okay, it's in, that looks good. Um, this stuff, I'm just gonna say this one dumb thing about it is uh, it, it kinks really easily. So if you if you bend it, it's just gonna sort of fold in on itself um, and then your fuel won't go through it. So this stuff is real, like just treat this like a little baby. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just coil it up at the end. So I'm gonna run this across the top. So when I lift it back up in there, which is gonna be fun, enjoy watching that. Uh, Lift that back in, this is just going to lay along here along with a bunch of other cables that uh, exist in this situation anyway, so it's fine for it to be there. Um, so just, yeah, coil it up, don't let it get bent, and then what we're going to do is then later on when we're doing the heater install, show you how to run this to wherever it is in your van that you have your heater. Um, so, cable this guy up. That's probably good. Back in. All right, done. Throw it back in. Car starts up. No codes, no worries. Uh, I'm reasonably owed all the diesel, but that's okay. So uh, yeah, good luck. Get to it. Enjoy dropping your tank. Pew.